Oh, wow. It's actually better than I expected. Hey guys, what are you doing in there? Come on out, I wanna show you something. This is my little fridge fan setup. It's just a portable battery and some old computer fans that I wired together. It's been working really well for the last two years. However, I have a little upgrade in mind. So that fan and battery combination lasts me about three to four days, which is pretty good. However, the fan doesn't move a lot of air. On really hot days like today, sometimes the things at the bottom of the fridge don't stay as cold as I would like. That's generally where we keep things like sparkling water, beer and wine, and some of our little treats, like uh, we got some pineapple tidbits, things like that. And I want it to be nice and cold down there. And for whatever reason, the design of this fridge, all of the cooling is up top. And you'd think that that would just kind of sink down to the bottom, except you have this box in the way. So you only have this air gap here. Then we keep stuff down here, and it's very difficult to keep it cleared out. In fact, I chose to record this video now because we don't have a lot of stuff in the fridge, and it's going to give me some space to work. These fans are very power efficient and very quiet. And they don't move a lot of air, but they do it just very gently. It's a nice way to circulate the air in the fridge. Let me shut this because it's so hot. A lot of the time we go grocery shopping, we buy, say, a 12 pack of, we like LaCroix uh, sparkling water. We'll put that in the bottom and it'll take like a day to cool down. I've tried to move that fan to different levels in the fridge, but what I'm finding is that it just doesn't have enough power to really force the air around. The other thing that I want to fix is I want some more runtime. So my thought is that I can run two different fans at different times. On our normal daily travels, I can use that nice, quiet, small, efficient fan. When I really want to cool things down quickly after grocery shopping, I can use a bigger, louder, more powerful fan. And I just got that in the mail, so let me show you. So I got a few goodies from Amazon, including this is the cord to fix my broken screen door. So I'm going to be working on that in the future. But... I got, I got a fan and I got a larger battery bank. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack and it's been running this fan for three to four days. I don't really pay attention to it. I just plug it in, I run it. And then a few days later, if it's dead, I take it out and I charge this up. This charges pretty quickly, takes a couple hours. We use a rapid charger, it takes USB-C, which is I think right there. A couple hours, then I throw it back in the fridge. It's good for a few days. It moves enough air to keep the fridge somewhat cool. But mostly it's silent and it's just a gentle, gentle airflow. I recently got this from Amazon and it's a much more powerful fan. The other thing that I like about this, since our fridge is small, it's a camper, it's a lower profile fan. It's a little bit fatter, but my plan is to stick this on the wall and I'll show you that in a second. But hopefully you can hear the sound difference. So we have this versus you can't even hear this one over this. But it's hard to explain. It just moves a lot more air with a lot more power. So that's kind of my goal. This takes 0.4 amps at five volts. So it's gonna use a lot more power. My hope is that it's gonna cool down that lower compartment much faster. I have Velcro on these, so I can't really read them, but they are like 0.16 amps, something like that. It's very, very low power draw on these. And that's why there's not a lot of power to them. So the next thing I got was a larger battery. This is just a cheap battery that I got off of Amazon. And I'm gonna rip it because they're impossible to open. All right, so this is a 30,000 milliamp hour and it is much bigger. It's about the same dimensions this way, but it's significantly thicker. My goal with this is that it's gonna run this fan for probably about the same time as this fan. I haven't really tested it yet, but I'm gonna guess three or four days and this will be dead. However, it'll run these fans for probably closer to two weeks. 
There's a lot of other fridge fans in the market, and I didn't really like any of them. That's why I chose to make my own. One of the more popular ones, I think, is from Camco, and it uses either two or four D batteries. The fan is said to last for about a month in your fridge, but then you're going to replace four D batteries. I have to charge things like my drone batteries, including our massive e-bike batteries. I'd much rather have a rechargeable battery. That means I'm not throwing batteries away all the time. I bet this thing will last me for years, and it was pretty cheap. I'm going to leave links to everything in the description below. Because our fridge is so small, I don't really want to waste space by putting this up here like this or over here. Really what I want to do is I want to mount it to the wall using command strips like that. It's somewhat wasted space anyway. That would give me easy access to plug things in on the top. I always keep this box of various Velcro and command strips kicking around because I always end up doing stuff like this. There's different types of command strips. You have the command strips that are just sticky and then you have these Velcro style. I really like these, especially for anything that needs to be removable. They're pretty strong, especially these big ones. And what I'll probably do is set these up on here somehow, and then I can stick it on, and then I can pull it out to charge it, and then I can put it back in. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna stay in place even over bumpy roads. But this is always an experiment. What I do is I take them ahead of time, I line them up, and I click them together. I'm not sure if you can see it. They are, it's not really true Velcro. Both sides are very firm, but they, they lock together. When they lock together, they become very strong. So I put them together, rip them apart, and then... With the command strips, I always use alcohol to prep the surfaces to get rid of any oils. It's so just a little bit like that. I'm gonna do that, dry it a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing in the fridge. Now, I don't know if this will be my permanent install location, but at least for the video, this is a good place to start. All right, I gotta rethink this because I don't want it standing up like this in here. And if I put it upside down, it makes it nearly impossible to access. And if I put it here, it's gonna waste the space there. We use this shelf a lot. I did a little thinking, you can see my fridge is warming up now. I think I'm gonna mount it right here, which is in this dead space anyway. And I'm gonna use this gap to force the air down on this side because this side usually gets full because I stack things in here. So that just means I need to have a little bit of clearance over here. It'll push the air down and then hopefully circulate it around and up. So let me do that and we'll see how it works. This is the side that I cleaned. They're a little too long to put on this way, but that's probably how I should put them. I will just mount them this way. Good enough. These are cheap. If I don't like it, I'll just pull them out and try again. However, I'm going to space them as far apart as I can. So right before this curve and right before this curve. I'm going to push on them. Really work them in. I'm going to clean that other spot in the fridge. Pull these off. I'm gonna plug this in ahead of time so that I make sure I leave enough space for the plug. Take this in, I'm gonna rest it right on the bottom, leave enough space. I have plenty of room for this, but we still need to add tape to this as well. I'm gonna take these smaller strips I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line them up. Obviously this needs to face out so I can suck air in and I want it to shoot the air down. Like I say, I'm gonna leave links to all this, but this is a GDS time fan, had good reviews. I'm gonna put this like this. Luckily the fan only weighs a couple grams. So it's not a very heavy fan. So like that. I'm going to clean the fridge again in that spot. You know, now that I'm looking at it, this side is where I have these locking pieces, but you can see they stick out. On this side, I have a nice clean shot all the way down straight, totally flat. That'll be really good for airflow. 
Now I'll take the sticky side here off. I want this shooting down. Kind of unsure of my positioning. I could do it right here, but I'm afraid that's gonna block some of the things that I put in the bottom. I'm gonna align it right here. Trying not to break the fan as I push it on. I can hook it over this top bar up here. And then I'll just plug it in. Oh yeah, look at that air. It's a nice flat fan. Doesn't take up a whole lot of space. And it's shooting straight down here. Oh wow. It's actually better than I expected. Those other fans were nice and quiet, but they just don't move the airflow. It's, it's like a hurricane down here. Let me shut the door open the bottom it's about equivalent to going like whoosh. it's a pretty strong airflow shooting right down here so it's noisy but i can't really hear it outside the fridge once i shut the door it's nearly silent my fridge is getting very warm i need to keep it shut for a while and just for time reference it is 217 I'm gonna go do a couple things and come back and see what the temperature in the fridge is. All right, guys, it is now 2.55. Let's see how it's doing. Well, back to 45 degrees, that's a huge improvement. And it's definitely blowing the air around. I did add this other fan in here just to see what it did. Of course, it fell over on me. I'm trying to aim it up at my fins. Had a little bit of ice buildup. I was hoping to use the warm temperatures of the fridge to help melt some of that. And as you can see, it did definitely drip quite a bit. Oh, I can really feel that the cold air, normally it's fairly warm down here, which means we're always questioning how long our juices are gonna last and things like that. But it's much colder down here. I'm really excited about that. I can stack things in here. And while it may, may interfere with the fan, it's not gonna completely ruin it. You know, like with everything RV, there's compromises. But anyways, we've been doing this for a couple of years. We like using the rechargeable battery packs. We use them anyway. Uh, we use them when we go hiking and things like that. So we're, we always have them in use. They're, they're always sitting around being charged. So I might as well do something really useful with it, like throw it in the fridge. If I know we're going to go hiking, I pull it out, I charge it up, and it's ready to go. I'd really like to know what you guys use for fridge fans. I know that they're not the most popular topic in the world. However, I think almost every RV fridge could benefit from a fridge fan. What do you guys think of this setup and is it something that you'd like to try? Of course, I'm gonna leave all of the links down below and I'd really appreciate it if you guys left a comment and let me know what you thought about this. Before I post this video, I'm gonna to try to find some other fan options that might work well. So look for those down in the links below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.